Hey guys, this is Donald down at Project Cave. I wanted to kind of update you on some of the cool projects we're working on down here. Uh, today we're going to be updating the rims on my Corvette. We're going to be combining a couple of new processes that are out there. Uh, we're going to be combining plastic dip and vinyl wrapping all into one to make these rims look badass. Alright guys, so this is the Corvette. Down here, it's just the, the, the standard polished aluminum, uh, but we're looking for something a little different. We want to update it. Uh, I actually have a custom vinyl print of red digi camo that we're going to be covering the front of it, and we're actually going to be plastic dipping the interior of the rim with plastic dips red blade. We'll show you how it's all done, and we're going to do everything with the tools and all the supplies here available at Project Cave. One of the most important processes that we're going to do is really cleaning these rims to make sure that everything adheres and doesn't come off while we're driving around. So we have a super low profile jack, we're going to get under it, get it jacked up, and get out jack stands. To prepare anything for paint and get all the grease and the grime and everything off, what I generally use is I use some sort of powdered bleach cleanser, Comet. Uh, use whatever you like. Bottom line is, you need to get the grease off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into the plastic dipping. And all you're going to do is the first coat is going to be a light mist coat, and then after that you're going to put three to four regular coats on. So that's going to give us what I'm using here. So I'm using the plastic dip blaze. Picked it up at Home Depot. Cheap, easy, a lot cheaper than buying rims. I am not a professional. I don't dip cars for a living. I am just a do-it-yourselfer who likes to do new things. So. Alright, with such a big lip, this is not very easy to get in here, actually. Fonzie makes this look way easier, by the way. This is not trying to get in here and move around and get it uniform. Uh, it goes up to 315 degrees or so. Uh, I mean, that might not be exact, uh, but it's in the 300 degree range that it's supposed to last up to, so I'm hoping this holds up. If it doesn't, worst case scenario, peel it off. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and put the second coat on, uh, try to get some more coverage. We're going to do this. Uh, probably three full coats, a fourth if, uh, if uh, our spray cans allow. It might run out by then. Um, we'll just put on whatever we can and See how it looks at the end. Honestly, two cans, just barely enough. We we probably could have gone another coat. It's gonna be the same deal. We'll go through and we'll uh we'll clean up this plastic dip on this side, just like that. Now it's not over here. It's not on here thick enough where we can just peel it off. Um, but we can we can rub it off and get it good, and uh, we'll be wrapping them in no time. So we can take time and do this, get them cleaned up, and get ready for wrap. All right, so this is what it looks like after we clean up all the overspray. I did all the detail work. So what I have over here is this is actually the digi camo wrap that it's going to be done in. So we're going to do all the faces in this. Now I had this print at a local vinyl shop, so you go to any vinyl shop, probably kind of give them your design. Um, I had to work with them very closely to get the size I want and the pattern. And you know, there, there's some breakage in the lines there, but once we wrap it, we'll we'll wrap it to where those lines kind of disappear in the pattern of the rim. Okay, so I took the digi camo wrap. And I just cut it into squares for now. I just make sure it's big enough to cover the rim. And basically what I'm going to do now is, although we've cleaned it, done all that, I'm actually going to go, anytime I wrap, I just use some alcohol in the squirt bottle. Now this is straight isopropyl alcohol, the stuff you get off the grocery shelf. Once again, you'll hear mixed things online about some people use it half and half with water and alcohol. Some people use special solutions. Um, I've used this before plenty of times, and it does just fine for me. Uh, but because we have the plastic dip on there, and I'm not sure what kind of reaction I have. I'm actually going to take my microfiber towel, and I'm going to spray this instead, and I'm just going to wipe down all the surfaces. And so if you guys don't know what a tack rag is, it's basically just a cotton kind of piece of cloth, and it's real sticky, and what does gets up dirt and dust, and if you've never vinyl wrap before, you'd be amazed by the stuff you can see through it. Uh, when you lay it down, literally if an eyelash drops on the surface and you wrap over it, you'd see the eyelash. Now this has a pattern on it, so it'd be a little harder to see than if you did a solid color, but I want to avoid any kind of imperfections if I can. Now another thing, when we wrap this, normally I would take this cap off and wrap this cap separately, put it on, make sure you get nice clean lines. Um, because we're doing a pattern, and I don't want that pattern to be broken up on the center cap. I'm actually going to leave the center cap. When we wrap it, we'll actually leave it and, and, and kind of cut around there so you can still remove it. Uh, but I really don't want to lose the flow of the pattern in there. 
Actually, I'm going to turn off this fan for now to avoid any air anything going in. There's no airflow going through here now, so I should minimize the uh, opportunity for dust to get up on here. Before we get into this, I kind of want to show you one of the other tools we're going to be using. It, it's a heat gun. I mean, if you're, uh, if you're in a pinch, you could use a hair dryer, anything that just kind of lets hot air out. What I just use is the very first heat function to, to heat and to, to stretch out. Feel this off. It's going to kind of want to come together in the middle. Alright, so when we're laying this, we want to keep it tight. Lay it down. Nope, see your, see that line there? Right. Go toward you. Nope, back to the left. We need to be right on that marker. Do you not see the marker line? There you go. Jason has problems finding the hole sometimes. So, all we're going to do is, now that it's on here tight, you're just going to kind of press down. I'm just going to use a microfiber cloth, once again, to kind of push it down. Now, sometimes, you know, you use squeegees, you use uh, different things. I, I, I use a squeegee on flat surfaces, but for something like this, there's not anywhere, there's not really a whole lot of flat surfaces. This will do just fine for pushing out the air bubbles. All right, so it's kind of hard to see because of the pattern of what we're doing here. But we just stretch it over and basically we're just going to start pushing it down until we get resistance. And once we get that resistance, we start to use the heat. All right, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm putting down a primer. This is also a 3M product. It's called 3M94 Primer. Um, it's really clear, kind of watery liquid. And what it does is it, it acts like a glue. You put it on, you let it dry, and in these areas that are, oh, shit, you gotta be careful with it. It's really thin, kind of tight, where you're really gonna have to stretch out the vinyl, and the vinyl has an opportunity to actually peel up and pull up because of the stretching of it. This is going to kind of be an added protection of it for, for gluing it, for holding it. It's, on something like this, it's probably not necessary. Uh, this 3M vinyl can be stretched up pretty far. So one of the most important things that I've ever learned with wrapping is that heating and stretching or applying are, are to be done independently. You should never do them together because if you heat and stretch at the same time, you risk the opportunity of tearing it. Um, if you come in here and you can look a little closer, it looks like we're barely going to make it, but it looks like this, uh, you can see this film starting to stretch and discolor. Even the 3M stuff, I mean, it has a certain maximum stretch rate and because this lip is so deep, we're kind of reaching it at this point. I think that we're going to make it. I mean, the, the end of the rim is literally right there. So we'll be able to cut it off there and, and you won't see that kind of distortion. But if you, if you had any deeper to go, you'd run into some complications. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm doing this, I'm gonna trim it. I'm gonna leave an eighth and a quarter around the edges because this stuff's pretty stretched out right now, but I still kind of want to wrap it and fold it over the edge so you get a, a nice clean look to it. I don't know if it's gonna be possible around all this. All right, so after a couple hours of work, we got them all wrapped. We got the uh, red digicam, we got the red inner rim. Uh, you know, I'm pleased with them, I'm happy. Uh, honestly, if you're gonna do one with the print, uh, you know, be careful of that, that lip. Uh, we stretched it to the max. I hate to point out the flaws, but just as a warning to some of you guys, you know, um, if you're gonna do it, you can look here, I mean, we kinda, it stretched it pretty far. I mean, you know, you gotta be looking for it, but overall, you're not gonna see that. 
be a good look. So we're gonna get out of the vet, get bolted up, get it dropped down. All right, so uh, this is what it looks like on the vet. Jason's gonna do a little walk around. Uh, but with the black, and the red, and the plastic in, I think it looks just mean. I'm loving it. Uh, so we're gonna leave it like this, you know, some things I'm kind of unsure about is how it's going to hold up the heat, the, you know, to, to water, to all that stuff. The best part about it is everything that we've done is completely reversible. We can take this off, we can take off the vinyl, we can unpeel the plastic, and it goes back to stock rims. Um, so a couple hours of work, a few dollars, and, uh, and honestly, I'd rather have these than some aftermarket rims. So uh, we'll keep you updated if there's any issues with it. We'll keep you updated if... Uh, you know, if we need to redo it or take them off or whatever it may be. But for now, I'm loving it.